In today's video, we'll be testing a new battery from Sycon. This is their 12 volt, 100 amp hour trolling motor battery. Now the pricing on this battery is very competitive. With the $18 coupon on Amazon right now, it's around $151, which is 11 cents per watt hour. Now that's really good because Sycon is known for using EVE cells and they suggest a few other upgrades on this battery including a DALI BMS and TVS protection. So it'll be interesting as we test this battery and tear it down to see what's on the inside. Now if you're new to the channel, last year I tested their 100 amp hour classic battery and ever since it's been installed in my enclosed trailer powering the lights, the fans, and any 12 volt devices in there. I've been very happy with the performance, so I'm excited to test this one out. So let's just jump right in the testing and see how this one does. And then right after that, we'll do a tear down of the battery and see what's on the inside. Now the first test that I completed on the battery was a full capacity test using my BK Precision Load Tester. I discharged the battery at a 0.2C rate or 20 amps in order to see if we could get the full rating capacity from the battery. By the time the test had finished, it ran for a total of five hours and 13 minutes. We pulled a total capacity of 104.4 amp hours or 1,336 watt hours. So yes, we did pull over the full rated capacity. Now taking a look at the voltage curve, you can see that the battery voltage is fairly flat through the entire discharge and just a little bit of voltage sag near the end of the test. In the next test on the battery, I wanna see if the BMS can handle the maximum continuous rated output, which is 100 amps or right around 1,280 watts. Now, in order to complete this max load test on batteries of all different sizes, I recently purchased this massive inverter from Sun Gold Power. This is their low frequency 12 volt, 4,000 watt inverter. Now, this inverter is super heavy duty. It's rated for 4,000 watts continuous or 12,000 watts surge. So I'll be excited to test this in future videos as well. So we're gonna set the load to 100 amps. We're gonna set up the timer and see if we can handle it for 15 minutes. So you can see with my clamp meter, I've gotten it right around 100 amps. We're pulling 105 amps from the battery. I've set the timer, so let's let this go for 15 minutes. So we're just hitting the 15 minute mark here. We're still pulling 105 amps. So yes, this can handle the maximum output for 15 minutes. Now when doing one of these max continuous loads, I like to make sure that the terminals don't overheat, meaning that the conductors on the inside are adequate for that load. So looking with my thermal camera, I'm showing that the maximum temperature is 90 degrees Fahrenheit, so no issues there. In the next test, I wanna see how well the BMS can handle surge amps. Because this is a trolling motor, it can handle more amps than usual. On their website, they state that it can handle 300 plus amps for five seconds. Now in order to test that out, I recently purchased this carbon pile load tester, which is capable of pulling up to 1000 amps. So we'll connect this up to the battery and see if it can handle the 300 amp load. So let's turn the load up to 300 amps and then we'll start the stopwatch to see how long it can handle the load. So let's turn it up, 300 amps. Try to hold it exactly there. Okay, so a little bit over 20 seconds. Now in order for the battery to turn back on, I did have to use a battery charger to kind of get it out of its hibernation mode, but it's turned back on and that's why the fans are running on this unit. In the next test, I wanna turn up the amperage until the battery shuts off to see where the overcurrent protection level is. So we ran 300 amps for about 20 seconds, but how high an amperage will it go before the BMS shuts off? So let's go ahead and turn this up, keep an eye on that screen, 200, 300, 400. Okay, so right when we hit 400 amps, the BMS shut off. Now here I was thinking this was a unique way to test the overcurrent protection and surge amps on each of these batteries, but I just saw a video posted by Will Prowse testing an SOK battery using a similar carbon pile load tester, so he definitely beat me to it, but at least I know it's a good way to test these batteries. Now what about low temperature charging protection on the battery? Does it actually work? To test that out, I've put the battery inside the Anchor Everfrost 2 for about 24 hours. It's set right around 32 degrees. So if we look at the thermometer here, you can see it's right under 30 degrees. So let's take it out and see if it charges. So I've removed the battery from the fridge and I have my adjustable power supply here. And when we connect this up, if it starts charging, then that means it does not have low temperature charging protection. So 
Moment of truth, look at that. It is not charging, meaning that the low temperature charging protection is set properly. I do have this turned all the way up on the amperage, so you can see that it does not charge when it's below freezing. So with all the tests completed on the battery, I've removed the lid, so let's take a look on the inside. Put the lid over to the side here. Okay, so we notice right away that this has a DALI BMS. This is a 100 amp model. Now, a lot of people use these um, in DIY builds, so you can actually purchase these from online retailers, so that's nice. Do you notice a low temperature uh, sensor here that is glued to the cells? For the conductors, looking at the main negative conductor, it's using uh, six gauge wire. And the positive conductor is a little bit bigger. Uh, do you see um, four gauge wire on that one? Um, let's see if we can remove this out of the case so we can get a closer look at the build quality. Now it took me a couple minutes to get the cells out of the battery case because they are very compressed in there, especially due to all the high density foam around the battery, just meaning that it's uh, well protected against you know drops and things like that. The first thing I did was look up the QR code. These are in fact using EVE cells with the manufacture date of 2024. Looking at the bus bars here, these are laser welded aluminum bus bars with these joints in them, which help with uh, contraction and expansion. And we also have foam in between each one of the cells to help with that as well. Now to hold the cells together, we do have fiber tape on the top and bottom. Um, I do think the high density foam does a good job compressing the cells inside the case as well, since it was so hard to remove them out. Now looking at the balance leads, it's also an important factor here. Uh, the negative balance lead here is on top of the terminal, which is great. And that's the same case with um, the positive lead. Now I did check the um, wire temperature ratings. The negative wire um, is rated at 200 C and the positive wire is rated at 105 C. Uh, that should be fine for each of these. Now the final thing that I've noticed about this battery is it does have a TVS diode here installed. I have not seen one of these before and I actually had to do some research to find out why you need one or why they're important, basically how it works. So the TVS diode stands for a transient voltage suppressor diode. Now, often when you have an induction load or a motor, think about like, uh, you know, turning on a motor, it's going to pull a lot of amps. And when you turn it off, you'll often see a very quick or brief voltage spike. Now, in order to stop that voltage spike, you have this diode in place. So when you get a quick uh, spike in voltage, what happens is the diode opens up, it shorts out to ground very briefly, and then um, that dissipates through heat and it stops the voltage spike. So it's kind of interesting. I've never seen this before, but it's kind of a cool little sensor for inductive loads to keep the voltage at a safe level. So often you have a fuse or a breaker for amperage protection, but this TVS diode gives you a bit of voltage protection. So after all the testing and teardown on the Sycon 12 volt, 100 amp hour trolling motor battery, let's go over some final thoughts. So first off, the price of this is really good at $151 or 11 cents per watt hour. Um, the cells are EVE cells and we did pull 104.4 amp hours in our capacity test and the BMS can handle quite the load. It handled 300 amps for about 20 seconds before shutting off. So all of that performs just as advertised. And I do like that it has that built-in TVS sensor um, to prevent uh, voltage spikes. So guys, let me know what you think about the Sycon 100 amp hour trolling motor battery. I will have the link to it down in the video description. And I appreciate Sycon sending this out for me to test. I was a fan of their previous battery and I've been using it constantly. And this one here also has very good performance, especially for the price. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll recommend a couple of other videos that you can check out if you are interested in this type of content. And remember, I do have a basic consulting service if you do want to reach out about basic battery questions or solar or even what type of power station you should buy. I'm available through that Ask Me link down in the video description. We'll see you guys in the next one.